It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clap, or a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 2. Greetings, America. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here all across the Fruited Plain. The phone number, if you'd like to join me, 877-973-7425. Always a joy to be with you. I want to play for you some audio. Made a lot of buzz this weekend. Uh, It was on Meet the Press. It was an exchange between Chuck Todd and Vivek. Ramaswamy about, uh, well, you know, he was somewhat vague in the debate over whether or not he would have certified the results of the election. So listen to this exchange between Vivek and Chuck Todd. Uh, let me bring up a couple of questions you didn't get a chance to answer at the debate. Most of the candidates on stage Wednesday night said Mike sure. Pence did the right thing on January 6th. Do you agree? I would have done it very differently. I think that there was a historic opportunity that he missed to reunite this country in that window. What I would have said is this is a moment for a true national consensus where there's two elements of what's required for a functioning democracy in America. One is secure elections, and the second is a peaceful transfer of power. When those things come into conflict, that's an opportunity for heroism. Here's what I would have said. We need single day voting on election day. We need paper ballots, and we need government-issued ID matching the voter file. And if we achieve that, then we have achieved victory, and we should not have any further complaint about election integrity. So what would 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 you have done through the Senate? So what would you have done with Mike Pence? You would have not certified the election? So in, in my capacity as president of the Senate, I would have led through that level of reform, then on that condition certified the election results, served it up to the president, yeah. President Trump then to sign that into law, and on January 7th declared the re-election campaign pursuant to a free and fair election. <sighs> According to Vivek Ramaswamy, when asked by Chuck Todd if Mike Pence was wrong or would he have done something different, he says he would have done something different, he would have been bold, He, as president of the Senate, would have uh, introduced legislation for single-day voting on Election Day, paper ballots, government-issued ID, and would have run that through, got it passed, and on January 7th, after President Trump signed it into law, um, would have announced re-election. The vice president of the United States, in his capacity as president of the Senate, lacks the power to introduce legislation in the United States Senate. So you have a guy who is running for president of the United States who doesn't want to alienate Trump voters, pull out of his rectum an idea that is literally impossible to get done in the United States Senate. But to some people, It sounds good because it scratches the itch and tickles the ear of the just-do-something crowd. He said, and again, this is very important, when confronted by Chuck Todd and asked, would you have done something different than Mike Pence certifying the results? He says, I would have done something different. I would have written this law then and there on that day and somehow got it passed by both houses of Congress on that day Uh, And then once passed, certified the results. What is that? The the clip from Billy Madison, we are all dumber for having heard this. It's physically, literally impossible for the vice president to draft and submit legislation in the Senate. It is not possible under the Constitution of the United States and the rules of the Senate for him to do so. How does a man running for president of the United States not know that? The question, the answer is he doesn't care. The answer is he doesn't care. We on the right continue to be plagued by charlatans and grifters. 
and magical thinking that gets us nowhere. Lots and lots of magical thinking. This weekend, I, I finally had enough and blocked a guy on my Instagram um, page. He was just adamantly insistent that Brian Kemp, the governor of Georgia, could get rid of Fawny Willis, the district attorney in Fulton County. He didn't know how it could be done. He just knew it had to be done and therefore could be done because he wanted it done. And proof of corruption in the process was that Brian Kemp couldn't do it. Now, I happen to know something about Georgia's law and constitution. Why? Because I happen to be a lawyer in Georgia, currently inactive on the bar, but I went to law school here and know Georgia law. I practice Georgia law. The governor of the state of Georgia has no power to remove a district attorney from office unless the district attorney is charged with a felony, at which time the governor can suspend the district attorney but cannot remove the district attorney. Yes, there is a law that passed the legislature that would allow a panel of prosecutors to remove a prosecutor, but that law is on hold pending judicial review. And even that law would not allow the governor to do it. The magical, mysterious thinking of the right continues to get us performance and spun up, but it doesn't actually get results. It's all performative. So I know people, and they, they, they come into the comments on my Substack page talking about the election and stolen election and all that sort of stuff. And... One of the the things that I hear all the time is that, well, yes, uh, there were 60 court cases filed by Donald Trump, and he lost 59 of the 60, but he lost 59 of the 60 because they were not allowed to present evidence. Now, notably, the people who tell me this didn't go to law school. Do you know why you're not allowed to present evidence in court? Because there isn't any. If you have evidence, you can present it. If you have speculation, it's speculation. It's not evidence. What the the Trump campaign had was speculation about things that happened. I mean, they had an expert, you should note, uh, who testified about what happened in several counties in Wisconsin and got it all wrong, so much so that they've been fined by the a Trump-appointed Court of Appeals judge who wrote a decision pointing out that this expert that the Trump campaign was using in Wisconsin was pointing out that certain ballot machines were used in certain counties in Wisconsin, and those ballot machines were not actually used in those counties in Wisconsin. They got it all wrong. They weren't allowed to present the evidence in court, not because they couldn't, but because they didn't have it. That's the actual God's honest truth. And yet there are people who, because of great performance in Kabuki theater, really do believe that Trump-appointed judges sympathetic to Donald Trump refuse to allow evidence to be entered into courts of law. And it's been repeated so many times that they believe it by faith. They believe it because they want the magical thinking. They don't want reality. Colton Moore is a state senator in Georgia. Colton Moore submitted what purported to be a letter requesting a special session of the state legislature to restrain Fawny Willis, the DA, in Fulton County. And Republicans in Georgia are nationwide being attacked. Now, I've got to tell you that this is going to burn bridges for Colton Moore, who already burned some bridges in the state legislature. If you were at the gathering a week and a half ago, you heard Brian Kemp talk about only one member of the state legislature opposed human trafficking legislation his wife had submitted. Brian Kemp's wife helped draft legislation on human trafficking. It was submitted to the state legislature, and it passed with all but one vote. And Brian Kemp says, and that legislator has heard from my wife multiple times and will continue to hear from my wife about his lone vote against human trafficking legislation. That legislator is Colton Moore, the man who now wants a a special session of the state legislature. It's not just that he played his politics badly here. It's that he can't get it done. The number of people who are spun up into existential frenzy about getting a special legislative session in Georgia to restrain the district attorney in Fulton County, let me give you the facts. It takes a three-fifths vote for members of the legislature to call a special session. It takes a three-fifths vote. 
Guess what the Republicans do not have in the state legislature? A three-fifths vote. They control a majority. They don't have three-fifths in either house. So good luck calling a special session. Members of the Republican legislature who are conservatives and sympathetic, by the way, are furious with Colton Moore because they're getting bombarded by constituents angry at them for not going along with this. And when they point out to the constituents, we don't have the votes to do it. We would have to have Democrats, and the Democrats aren't doing it. The constituents suddenly realize they've been played because there's not a plan. So you have a special session of the legislature. So now what are you going to do? What's your plan? That's another part of the problem is there is no plan. There's no legislative proposal to do anything. In Washington, D.C., Andy Biggs has produced legislation. Andy Biggs has produced legislation that would uh, prohibit federal funding from going to Fulton County, Georgia, due to this prosecution. And that's all well and good. At least there's a substantive plan, but there's a problem. How do you get it through the United States House of Representatives? You're going to lose four or five Republicans, and you need those four or five Republicans to get it passed. Let's say you get those four or five Republicans. Why is Chuck Schumer going to put it to a vote in the Senate? And let's say Chuck Schumer does, and it passes. How's it going to get around Joe Biden's veto? You don't have two-thirds of either House of Congress to be able to do this. You know, the, the problem here is that there are rules, there are processes, there is legislation, there is the Constitution. And to get things done, whether you like it or not, you have to follow the rules. you got to follow the process. you got to follow the law. you got to follow the Constitution. This mythical, magical thinking from Vivek Ramaswamy, from Colton Moore, from others who are bellyaching and complaining about the way things are done is no different from the left that constantly demands gun control and is always and forever frustrated that they can't get it passed through the legislature. Rules, what are they? How does the legislature work? How does a bill become a law? We have this creepy know-nothingism seeping into the right that we've seen for years on the left when it comes to this stuff. It's just powered by unicorn farts and magical thinking. Oh, I want this to happen. Let me snap my fingers and it's going to happen. No, it's not. It's not going to happen because we are still, whether you believe it or not, at bottom, a nation of laws and you have to follow the law, the process to get something done. You have to build a coalition to get it done. Setting out a letter calling for a special session of the legislature that then gets your fellow Republicans attacked by people across the country who don't know that you need a three-fifths majority to do it is not a way to build bridges to get anything done. It's a way to make yourself a pariah in the legislature with your own side. Going on MSR or checked out on Meet the Press on NBC and saying, I would have done it different from Mike Pence. I would have drafted a bill that day, submitted it to the Senate as president of the Senate that day and got it past the House that day and gotten President Trump to sign it that day and then certified the election. It may sound good to idiots who are idiots, but to people who know anything about the rule of law, it's physically, literally impossible. And yet, people want the magical thinking. Not only do they want the magical thinking, they want the grievance of the magical thinking not happening. The number of people yelling that Brian Kemp can get rid of that prosecutor, he just won't do it. Show me the law. There isn't one. Show me the rule. There isn't one. Show me the process. There isn't one. But he should do it because he's got to do it. It doesn't matter. This is no different from all the things over the years that the left has wanted that they can't get done. And they still can't get done. They haven't been able to enact meaningful gun control in the at the federal level. Why? Because the process, the rules, the laws, the Constitution, it gets in their way. And now the GOP, some parts of it are becoming the same way. They want to scream into the wind and demand that things be done that they want done, to heck with reason, to heck with process, to heck with law, just do it. Except America doesn't work that way. And by the way, that's a feature, not a bug. It's difficult to get things done in this country. The founders wanted it to be that way. They wanted a process that generated frictions to slow things down so that the mob could not rule. You should all, whether you are or not, you should all be alarmed that a candidate for president of the United States went on Meet the Press 
and said he would do something that is literally physically impossible to get done, that he identified a power of a vice president that does not exist and, in fact, is in the rules of the Senate impossible for the vice president to do. If you're in Georgia, you should be concerned that a state senator has pulled a bait and switch on constituents telling them that we should have this special session and is completely ignorant of the fact that you don't have the votes to have a special session. Stop demanding and start understanding. The rules of the game matter. You master the rules, you win the game. But too many conservatives would rather scream right now than master the game. We can beat the left, but we beat them with the rule book, not with performance and stunts and kabuki theater. We had a meaningful change in this country, but you got to learn how to play the system not pretend the system doesn't exist, and then fundraise off the grift of pretending it doesn't exist. I am a small businessman. The company that I run for my radio show, it's a small business. I've got employees. I don't have HR. You may be in that situation, and you may really need HR. Well, you may want to talk to Bambi. When running a business, your employees can create all sorts of interesting situations, and they could get you in trouble. What happens when two employees are squabbling? One of them smells bad all the time. What do you do? How do you navigate the rules? With Bambi, you get access to your own dedicated HR manager starting at just $99 a month. They're available by phone, email, real-time chat. Onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance. Your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. Let Bambi handle your employees for you. Their HR autopilot automates important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. Listen, you want U.S.-based HR managers who give you experience, expertise, a personal touch you need to make it seem like they're a part of your team. They can cost eighty grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 a month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now. Type in Eric Erickson under podcast when you sign up. It'll help you. It'll help your company grow. It'll help you keep peace of mind. It's spelled B-A-M-B-E-E. Bam. B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Eric Erickson. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Real quick, we had a couple of people call and say, what about drop boxes? What about drop boxes in in Georgia? Well, this is part of the problem here with the magical thinking uh, that we have so many people on the right. The idea of drop boxes came from the Trump administration, uh, and they were embraced by a lot of secretaries of state around the nation in Georgia and elsewhere uh, because people were concerned at the time of COVID spreading that they didn't need to be inside boards of election piled in together. Everybody was doing social distancing and the like, so drop boxes would be an easy thing to do. The Trump administration recommended it. Secretaries of State around the nation decided to deploy them under uh, states that had emergency declarations on COVID, gave them latitude, and they did. And yes, it was a rules change in the middle of the game. And no, it should not have happened. Absolutely right. It should not have happened because it was a rules change in the middle of the game, but it was the Trump administration that came up with the idea. It wasn't Brad Raffensperger in Georgia or anyone else. It was it was the Trump administration came up with the idea. And it was the secretaries of state who embraced it at the time because they were concerned about a global pandemic. Now, well, I'm going to move on. Before I do, let me tell you, um, if you're a small business and you're worried about your technology costs at your small business, I know how to save you some money, and I don't mean that flippantly, and I don't say it just because you're an advertiser, because I know since I had them build my son a, a gaming PC, Vision Computers can build your offices, laptops, and desktops, saving you money. You don't get the generic big box option. You get what you actually need and want from Vision Computer. And then they serve as your tech support, too. So if you're, I mean, you're a doctor's office, a lawyer's office, an electrician's office, a plumber's office, you you own the company and you need need IT support, but you don't have time to hire an IT person. You don't want to be the IT person. Call Vision Computer. Let them build your computers. And then your employees get a number they can call whenever they have a computer problem. And Vision Computers can troubleshoot over the phone for them. You don't have to do it. Your employee can do it directly. All you have to do is go to visioncomputers.com or call them at 404-COMPUTE. Any of you listening nationwide can do this. 404-COMPUTE. Let Vision build your computers and be your IT support. 404-COMPUTE. 
Greetings and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the United States of America. The phone number 877-973-7425. There's this story. It I uh, it just you know, I I, I get mad about a uh, itching ears and tickled ears and all that stuff. This one, oh, it just, it, it hits one of my pet peeves. The U.S. is pumping oil faster than ever. Republicans don't care. The late summer surge in gasoline prices is heightening the risks that inflation poses for President Joe Biden and offering Republicans a new chance to pin the blame on his green agenda. The GOP narrative has a major hole. U.S. oil production, already the highest in the world, is on track to set a new record this year and will probably rise even more in 2024. But the ever-increasing flow of U.S. crude has failed to keep a lid on gasoline prices, showing once again that a global market drives the fuel prices that shape president's political futures. And that means events far beyond the nation's borders will play a sizable role in voters' verdict on Bidenomics, as global oil prices rise and fall in response to banking conditions in Europe, China's slumping real estate market, Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine, and the latest maneuvers by Saudi Arabia. It is an absolute and indisputable fact that American oil production is the highest it's ever been, even with Joe Biden as president. What the media doesn't want to tell you, because the media is trying to cover for Joe Biden, is that American oil production, though the highest it's been, could be higher Oil production could be even higher than it is. Donald Trump opened parts of Anwar, the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in Alaska, to drilling. We know there is a ton of oil there. And Joe Biden shut it all down. Joe Biden has canceled and refused to expand leases for federal lands. He's taken offshore drilling off the table. So though high, our oil production could be even higher. Not only that, it's not just the production, it's the refining capacity. And Joe Biden has curtailed our refining capacity in this country, has failed to issue permits. He's done a lot. The media is covering for him, saying, well, Republicans are pouncing, but we're at the highest oil production levels in the country. Yes, and it still could be higher. And refining could be faster and expanded. But also, let's keep in mind, Joe Biden also screwed up our relationship with Saudi Arabia. Listen, I, I, I got a plain hard truth for members of the media, and they hate it. They respond like petulant children. The reality is Saudi Arabia may be bad because of Jamal Khashoggi and other things, but Saudi Arabia is a necessary ally in the Middle East. And Joe Biden decided to take the Jimmy Carter approach of, of human rights issues and relationships, and because he didn't think Saudi Arabia has a good one, and he, like the media, mad about Jamal Khashoggi being killed, decided to say, screw you, Saudi Arabia. And guess what? Saudi Arabia said, ha, 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 we'll give our oil elsewhere or we'll restrict it. And they've done this to hurt Joe Biden, and it's actually hurting the American public. And it's all because of Joe Biden's incompetence. Y'all, The truth is that, yes, the United States is producing an all-time high of 12.8 million barrels a day this year. It's going to grow to 13.1 million barrels in 2024, according to the Energy Information Administration. That's up from 5 million barrels a day in 2008. We are roughly the number one global oil producer. That's all true. But what members of the press fail to talk about are the restrictions that the Biden administration has placed on oil producers, the walkbacks of access to land, federal land, the regulations and the costs, and also one other important thing. The Biden administration has declared war on oil production. 
It may be high, but Biden has said he intends to end it all. So there is no incentive for oil companies to invest further in oil production in this country when Joe Biden says their days are numbered. Why would an investor invest in oil production in this country? It, you know how long it takes? It takes decades for oil companies to get their investment back. When you say you only got 10 years left, there's no reason to drill more because they're not going to get their investment money back. It's a bad investment on their part. At the end of the day, it's a business. It's not just pumping oil for you. It's a business to reward investors. And when your investors are told there's no reason to drill because you're not going to get your money back, they don't drill. The Biden administration has done everything possible to disincentivize exploration and expanded production in this country. They're looking at record uh, drilling. We're drilling more than we've ever drilled. Yes, but it could be even more. We shouldn't be relying on OPEC at all. We should be overall a net exporter. We shouldn't need any foreign oil in the United States, but we still do because of what the Biden administration has done. And it is notable that it is members of the press circling wagons around the Biden administration yet again to claim that what is true is not true, to obfuscate the truth and muddy the water and throw up objections to the truth. And yet it doesn't appear to be helping Joe Biden. There's polling out. The AP NORC poll. We can ignore Donald Trump in this polling. Now, let me just read you this key statement from the polling. In the poll, according to the Associated Press, fully 77% said Biden is too old to be effective for four more years. Not only do 89% of Republicans say that, 69% of Democrats say that as well. Yes, it's true. They still prefer old Biden to what they view as corrupt Trump. It's true. That's what the polling says. But if the economy tanks, will they still say that? Americans have had enough of old men for president. That's also, by the way, the age issue is weighing on Trump in the polling as well. The public's had enough of Joe Biden. They don't like the alternative Kamala Harris. They don't seem to like the alternative Donald Trump. They want someone new. And by the way, you should know this transcends young voters senior citizens, the boomers. They think Joe Biden is too old to be president. Gen X thinks Joe Biden is too old to be president. Millennials think Joe Biden is too old to be president. Gen Z thinks Joe Biden is too old to be president. Men think Joe Biden is too old to be president. Women think Joe Biden is too old to be president. They all think he's too old to be president of the United States. 26% of people directly brought up Joe Biden's age. An additional 15% used words such as slow or confused. One Republican thought a potato might have been Dan Quayle. Among Democrats, Biden's age was mentioned up front by 28%. They preferred terms over president, leader, strong, or capable. One who approves of his performance nevertheless called him senile. 3% of the survey came up with confused as the first descriptor for Trump. Some came up with old. 15% used crooked or corrupt. 11% used bad. 8% used liar or dishonest. Biden just seems to be very compromised by age-related conditions, says Eric Denzenhall, 60, a corporate scandal management consultant who's followed Donald Trump's career and worked in the Reagan White House. Even people who like him see him as being frail and not altogether there. Whatever Trump's negatives are, I don't think most people see them as being related to being disabled in an age-related way, he said. In fact, the more you throw at him, the more he seems like a ranting toddler. Disturbing, sure, but elderly, not necessarily. Trump has been ranting this way for almost eight decades, and it always drives him forward. It's one quote. One Democrat said uh, Joe Biden looks like an older gentleman with emphasis on old. He has problems. Bernie Sanders is going to New Hampshire driving speculation. Now, Bernie Sanders was on TV the other day praising Joe Biden, but Sanders, he's back in New Hampshire, and it's raising questions. He is tapping down on Gavin Newsom as well, telling Newsom to wait his turn. Gavin Newsom 
is earning the ire of the White House. This is from NBC News. Biden advisors bristle at Gavin Newsom's plan to debate DeSantis. Vice President Kamala Harris's allies are particularly annoyed by the California governor's move into the spotlight ahead of a possible 2028 Democratic nomination fight. Though Biden's camp no longer sees Newsom as a wannabe challenger, and some in Biden's orbit praise him for acting as a top campaign surrogate, Newsom's plan to debate Ron DeSantis on television carries more risk than potential reward, these people say. This has caused consternation within Biden's operation and among Kamala Harris's allies. Some Biden advisors have complained privately that the planned debate, which Fox News host Sean Hannity would moderate, could make voters think Newsom is running a shadow 2024 campaign at a time when most Democrats say they prefer a different candidate at the top of the ticket. It's not clear yet the debate will actually go forward. They've been haggling over proposed rules since DeSantis accepted Newsom's standing challenge this month. But the specter of the two governors going head-to-head has highlighted the degree to which Biden's interests aren't always clear and can diverge from Kamala Harris's interests. Some Democrats think Newsom will help Joe Biden. Here's the problem. Joe Biden appears old. You put Gavin Newsom on stage, it makes him appear even older. Whether you like Newsom or not, he's not a dumb man. You can disagree with him. I do on pretty much everything. But he's more energetic than Joe Biden. He's not prone to wandering off the stage, nor is he prone to losing his thoughts. Having Newsom and DeSantis debate on Fox News, it helps them both. And it hurts Trump and Biden. I wonder how many people would watch. I suspect a number of people would watch. They're haggling on the details. Kamala Harris's team, of course, is furious because Kamala Harris herself is not a good candidate and not well-liked by people, and she's afraid of getting upstaged, and she is going to get upstaged. The problem for Joe Biden is his age. And there's a circle around, there's a, there's a, there's a covering aspect to it. The media is circling the wagons. They're trying to cover for him and do his apologetics on oil. But at the end of the day, the problem is Joe Biden's age. It keeps coming back to Joe Biden's age. All of the polling shows it's a problem. Joe Biden, he went off to Hawaii for a couple hours. He went back to Lake Tahoe. By the way, the White House is already signaling he's going back to the beach. He's been in Lake Tahoe. He's headed back to Washington this week, and he's going back to Delaware to go back to the beach. He's going to spend the last weekend for Labor Day weekend at the beach in Delaware. He hasn't done any work. Now, I don't complain. A Republicans complain. I can't believe he's not doing his job. I don't want Joe Biden to do his job. I wish he would stay on vacation. But it is kind of remarkable how much vacation he's taking at his age and how much the media has to do apologetics for him. Poll after poll after poll after poll after poll shows Democrats and Republicans both think the guy is too old to do the job of the presidency, and he refuses to get out of the way. And that, my friends, helps Donald Trump. Even Chuck Todd this weekend on Meet the Press said the conventional wisdom in the press that Donald Trump can't win is something the press itself needs to be disabused of. Of course he can win. Odds are against him, but he can win. He did in 2016, after all. Now, one of the groups out there fighting for conservatives to get elected around the nation is Patriot Mobile. You move your cell phone service to them by going to patriotmobile.com slash Eric. They then fund the causes you care about. Patriot Mobile is the only cell phone provider out there that was actually legitimately established as a Christian conservative cell phone provider. So you move your business to Patriot Mobile, and Patriot Mobile will grow their profits. And when they grow their profits, they give to the causes you hear about, the Second Amendment, the pro-life cause, conservative parents battling wokes on school boards. They've actually been doing so well with that, the, the left has started attacking them. But they need your business to do it. You get guaranteed great service. They're using the same cell towers you're probably already using. You can even take your existing phone number from them. You can get a new one if you want. If you go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric today, you can uh, see their rates. You can see their service down to your house, how good the 5G, the data, and the voice is. You can also call them 972-PATRIOT, 972-PATRIOT. Tell them I sent you. You get free activation with my name. 
and you get uh, 100% U.S.-based customer service. 972-PATRIOT. Tell them I sent you. Or go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric, patriotmobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K. Go move your cell service to Patriot Mobile. Do business with a company that shares your values. Hi there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number, 877-973-7425. So it appears those of us in the southeast are going to get hit by the hurricane. There's a warning out now. I'm looking uh, from AccuWeather that Idalia, I guess is how you pronounce it, will undergo explosive strengthening ahead of the Florida landfall. Uh, significant risks to Florida. Um, an extreme risk for impacts is now in place for a portion of the Sunshine State centered around the Big Bend region, bridging the Gulf Coast and the Panhandle of the peninsula. This area will be most at risk for life-threatening storm surge flooding, dangerous winds, torrential rain as Adalia approaches as a hurricane on Wednesday morning. A hurricane warning is in effect for the west coast of Florida, extending from the eastern part of the Panhandle, encompassing Tampa Bay and points south of there. Tropical storm watches and warnings are also out for other regions of Florida's Gulf Coast, including the Florida Keys. A broader area across the southeast from Georgia to the Carolinas and Virginia is forecast to be directly impacted by the storm later in the week. So you got tropical storm now. Uh, Monday morning, it was just west of Cuba. Maximum sustained winds of 65 miles per hour. Slow erratic motion is expected to continue Monday before it picks up steam and starts moving north. If it wobbles a little to the west, uh, those of us in Georgia may have a greater statewide impact, but South Georgia is going to be impacted. Um, Florida definitely going to be impacted uh, as well. And then it's going to blow off, according to current projections, will affect South Carolina and parts of far east North Carolina before moving out to sea. And this is really, again, important. And I know it's self-serving for me to say this, but whichever radio station you're listening to me on right now is going to be able to provide more flexible coverage of this situation. And so stick with radio. Make sure you got batteries charged, um, whatever you need, because the storm looks like it could seriously intensify into a Category 3 storm. Now, for those of us who grew up in South Louisiana or Florida, you, you don't really – you take a Category 3 storm. I've been through plenty in my day, and you kind of laugh and say it's it's not that big. Yes, there will be trees down and probably power lines and stuff, but with storm surges in Florida, you do have to think about that. It, it's not expected to become a Category 4 or Category 5, so there will just be a lot of rain out there. But please stick in mind – um, keep in mind that you you do have the situation shaping up. Stick with your local radio station. Now, I got to tell you about Omaha Steaks because Labor Day is coming up. Y'all, uh, Labor Day is this coming Monday. We got we all get a day off work, and we could be grilling with Omaha Steaks. You could save 50% site-wide, get an incredible deal at omahasteaks.com. You put Eric in the search bar, and you get the Omaha Steaks uh, Labor Day grilling package. They have 100% satisfaction guarantee, and you get eight free burgers and eight free gourmet jumbo franks with the package. In addition to butcher cut fillets, chicken breast, bacon rack, pork chops, so much more. Don't forget you can get sides and desserts. You can even get main course meals from omahasteaks.com and a heck of a lot of great seafood. They have an amazing supply chain for seafood from the Atlantic and the Pacific. They ship it to you freshly frozen. Go to omahasteaks.com. You put Eric in the search bar, E-R-I-C-K. You can get all of this at 100% satisfaction guarantee. They want a lifetime relationship with you. OmahaSteaks.com. Labor Day is on the way. Stock up now for your Labor Day grilling session. Get those eight free burgers, eight free gourmet jumbo franks. OmahaSteaks.com. Step into the world of power, loyalty, and luck. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. With family, cannolis, and spins mean everything. Now, you want to get mixed up in the family business. Introducing The Godfather at ChompaCasino.com. Test your luck in the shadowy world of The Godfather slot. Someday, I will call upon you to do a service for me. Play The Godfather now at ChompaCasino.com. Welcome to the family. VGW Group. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.